What's up, everybody? In this video, I'm going to show you guys ticker SMH ETF. It is the Venect Vector Semiconductor ETF. So ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund, guys. And it's tracking those major semiconductor production and equipment companies. It has 25 total stocks in it. It's on the NASDAQ exchange. It rebalances quarterly. It has options and its distribution frequency is quarterly as it rebalances quarterly. Total net assets in the ETF is 8.1 billion with different weightings in each stock company. And the expense ratio is really low at 0.35%. So guys, for the holdings, you can see here the percent of the net assets of SMH, ETF, TSM, NVIDIA, and Texas Instruments are the big three here. As you can see, the weightings get lower and lower all the way down to OLED at just under 1% and Corvo Incorporated just over 1%. So guys, let's start with the highest holding in the ETF, TSM, and we're going to go down from there. And all this information, guys, is from finviz.com. If you've never heard of it, check it out. It's pretty cool. All the information's from there. So all credit goes to Finviz. So guys, the first and largest holding in SMH ETF is Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company Limited, just over 10% holding in the ETF. Guys, I'm going to go over the, the PE, forward PE, EPS, PEG ratio, and the margins along with the dividend and current ratio. If you don't know how to calculate PE, forward PE, or any of these, I'm going to make videos coming up. But real quick, the PE ratio is just the price to earnings ratio. You take the share price, divide it by the trailing 12-month EPS. Four PE is the same thing, except using the next four quarter projections, right? Next year earnings. EPS are the five, next five years is just the annual compounding rate. Analysts think this will be going. So it'll compound 15.8% every single year. That's pretty good growth. The PEG ratio is the PE number. So 21.35 divided by EPS for the next five years. So divide that by 15.8 and you'll get this number. Gross margin is just its revenue minus the cost of goods sold. Anything over 50 is good for that. So operating margin, guys, is gross margin minus all the operating expenses, right? R&D, general and emission, whatever kind of operating costs they have. Those kind of things are your operating margins, that operating income, right? And then your profit margin, guys, is that net income. You got to pay all the taxes, right? Interest, et cetera. And then your market cap is simply the amount of shares outstanding times the share price, which will give you usually a large number. Dividend yield, basically it shows you the percent you're going to be getting back off the share price, right? So if the share price is hundred bucks, you'd be getting $2.08 in dividends per year, right? But the price is always changing. So this dividend yield is always changing, right? With that price. And then the current ratio, guys, is just your total assets divided by your total liabilities. You want that to be over one. Okay, so with that being quickly overviewed, let's go into the numbers. The PE ratio is 21.35, forward PE 14.34, EPS for the next five years is 15.8%, which is pretty good. PEG ratio 1.35, again, PE divided by the EPS for the next five years. That's a good number. Anything under two is solid, we'll take it. Gross margin, operating margin, and profit margins are here. They usually get lower and lower. Anything over 50 is good. And anything over 20, 25% is good for profit margin. So they have great numbers, guys. And they have a market cap of just under 500 billion with a dividend yield of just over 2% and a current ratio of 2.20%. So a lot more assets compared to their liabilities. Solid company, solid PEG ratio, and good EPS for the next five years. That's why it's the number one holding in the ETF. I really like it. The second biggest holding is NVIDIA Corporation, just under 9% of the equity right in the ETF. A little bit of a high PE ratio. Anything over 20, 25 is a little bit high. Anything over 50 is really high, so it's kind of in between there, a little high. Four PE, though, of 27.82, so it's supposed to have good next several quarters. EPS for the next five years, guys, look at this number. That's insane, 30.75%. So it's going to be growing compoundedly. Every year, pretty solid. Hopefully that even goes higher. That'd be fantastic. So it has a PEG, price to earnings to growth. Again, PE divided by 30.75, 1.59. It's under two. That's solid. Gross margin, 
just under 65%, operating margin 37.3%, profit margin 36%. So these are great margins, guys. Over 50% for the gross margin, over at 20, 25% for profit margin. So excellent numbers there. With NVIDIA, it's a little overvalued right now having that high of a PE ratio, but people are just kind of buying it now with the projected earnings, EPS for the next five years, they want it now so that they can reap the benefits later. So it's putting it slightly overvalued right now around that $200 mark, market cap of just over 500 billion, some super small dividend, right? Not even 0.1%. And it has a great asset to liability ratio 6.7. Texas Instruments is their third largest holding with 5.41% equity in the ETF, PE ratio of 20.38, forward PE of 18.03, EPS for the next five years, 10%, a little lower than Taiwan Semiconductors in NVIDIA, but that's okay. Not every stock in the ETF is going to be phenomenal with a PEG of 2.04, over two, but that's okay, still a decent number. And here's the margin, guys. Gross margin's over 50%, and profit margin is over at 20, 25%. So they're a very profitable company with a market cap of 160.93 billion, pays a great dividend, almost 3%, and it has a lot more assets and liabilities with a 5.3 asset to liability ratio. Intel Corp has a 5.3% holding, in SMH, PE ratio of 9.37, nice and low. I like it. Forward PE of 12.4. So the forward PE is higher than the PE now. So next year's earnings aren't going to be as good, right? Higher PE for projection than current. You want to say that be lower, and that's okay. PEG ratio of 2.77, quite high, right? Not a whole lot of growth in the next five years. They're going to be building a factory here in Ohio. So a lot of money is going to be going toward that, I'm assuming. And you can see it has great margins here, right? Over 50% for their gross margin, operating margin of just under 25%, profit margin 25%. So that's fantastic with a market cap of 192 billion. Pays a great dividend, 3.2% dividend. So if you had 10 grand invested in this, annually you get about $320 just in dividends. And then you could reinvest that into the company if you want, or just pocket it and pay the taxes. Current ratio of 2.10. A lot more assets and liabilities. Next company, guys, in ETF is Broadcom Incorporated with a 5.29% holding in the ETF, ticker AVGO. PE ratio is a little high at 31.9 with the four PE ratio of 14.52. Again, people are buying it in, getting in now as the stock has dipped and they know it's going to have better earnings in the next several years. And again, with that EPS next five years at 14.74% with a peg ratio of 2.17, a little high, but that's okay. Margins are fantastic. 63% gross margin, 34% operating margin and 26.4% profit margin over that 20 to 25%. So that's great. Market cap about a quarter billion dollars and it pays just about a 3% dividend with the share price at what it is right now at end of April with a current ratio of 2.40, fantastic ratio. Before I go any further, guys, I put a lot of work in this video. If you're enjoying it, give it a like down below and subscribe. It helps out the channel a ton. ASML Holdings, similar ratio to Broadcom with 5.18% holding in the ETF. A little overvalued at PE ratio of 40.13, forward PE of 26.49, with EPS next five years of 29.8, right? So this gives it a lower PEG, Price earnings growth ratio 1.35, 40.13 divided by 29.8. So great earning potential in the future. And here's the margin, guys. That profit margin's over that 20 to 25%, which is fantastic. And the gross margin's over 50%. Fantastic. With just under a quarter trillion market cap at 238 billion. Pays a small dividend, just under 1%, and has more assets and liabilities with that current ratio just over one. Analog Devices Incorporated, ADI, 5% holding in the ETF. A little overvalued right now with a PE of 47.82. Forward PE is 16.62. EPS the next five years is under 15%, giving it a little high of a price earnings growth ratio as a PE is high and the EPS isn't significant, right? Still a solid number for EPS for the next five years, but with it being overvalued now, it gives it a lower PE ratio. Maybe it'll beat these numbers, who knows? 
gross margins, good operating margin and profit margin are under that 20 to 25%, but there's room to grow off that. And that's not horrible, right? Anything 20 to 25% or more is good. So it's just under that market cap, a little smaller, 82.53 billion. It does pay a dividend of almost 2% and has a current ratio of 2.1. Qualcomm is one of my favorites, just under 5% holding in the ETF. PE ratio of 15.48 with a 4P of 10.77. So projected earnings supposed to be higher than the last four quarters. EPS the next five years of about 15%. Divide that from the PE ratio and you get just over one, which is fantastic. Gross margins are high. Operating margins are high and profit margin 27.7%. Right in that excellent section over at 20 to 25% profit margin. 160.89 billion market cap pays a 2% dividend right now and has a current ratio of 1.6. Lamb Research, another one of my favorites. Lamb Research Corporation has a PE ratio of 14.28, a forward PE of 12.02, earnings per share the next five years at 13.95%, giving it a nice and low PEG ratio, 1.02. So great price to earnings to growth ratio. The margins are fantastic. Gross margin, just under 50%. Profit margin, 25.5% over our 20 to 25% profit margin. Fantastic. It has a market cap of $66.24 billion, has a dividend of 1.31%, and it has a current ratio 3.10, a lot more assets and liabilities. Great company with Lamb. AMD Advanced Micro Devices has just over 4% holding in the ETF, another one of my favorites, PE ratio of 32.99. 4P of 18.33, so a lot of future growth here in the next year. EPS next five years is 29.9%. That's fantastic, giving it a low price to earnings to growth ratio as it has a lot of growth compounded for the next five years, at least forecasted from analysts, right? Gross margin about 50%. Operating and profit margin hovering around 20%, so those are fine. Market cap of 146.74 billion. Doesn't pay a dividend but has a current ratio of 2.00, which is fantastic. And their debt, guys, is like zero. They have like no debt. Um, at least I briefly checked. It was like 10 million bucks or something small. So that's great with AMD. AMAT, Applied Materials Incorporated, just over 4% holding in the ETF like AMD, has a price to earnings ratio of 15.14. Again, a lot of these here under 20, which is fantastic. Some over 20, a little overvalued. This one's slightly undervalued with a forward PE of 11.71. EPS for the next five years of 15.73%, a higher number than its PE ratio, giving it just under a 1.00 price to earnings to growth ratio, gross margin around 50%, profit margin is over 27%, and here's its operating margin. So a very profitable company, great outlook, and they have a market cap of around $100 billion dollars with a dividend of about 1% annually. So if you had a $10,000 stake in this company, you'd be getting about $25 a quarter, which is about 100 bucks a year, give or take. That's if it was 1%, you could just reinvest that back into the company with a current ratio of 2.50. A lot more assets and liabilities. My favorite semiconductor play, Micron Technologies, ticker MU, just over 4% holding in the ETF has a PE ratio of 8.37 with a 4 PE of 5.25. These are fantastic numbers with a EPS for the next five years of 29.65%. Also not fantastic numbers. These are the three best of all the semiconductors with a PEG price earnings growth ratio of 0 0.28. These four numbers are all the best so far I've gone through. One of my favorite semiconductor plays, I own it in my Roth IRA. Gross margin, operating margin, profit margin, all very good with gross margin just under 50%, profit margin just under 30%. Giving this company $78.28 billion market cap, great operating margins, pays a small dividend. That'll increase throughout the years and has a current ratio of 3.10, more assets than liabilities. Great company here with Micron, which was like their third or fourth holding though. On to the next one. Our next company in the ETF, guys, is NXPI semiconductors with a 4.09% holding in the ETF. It has a PE ratio of 25.03, a forward PE of 12.44, EPS the next five years, 16.83, a PEG ratio of 1.5, which is solid. It's under two. 
Margins are fantastic. Gross is over 50. Profits just under 20. That's okay. Hopefully, his numbers can get better and better. Giving it a market cap, guys, just under $50 billion. Pays a dividend of 1.32% in a current ratio of 2.1. KLA Corporation has a 3.89% holding in the ETF. 16.2 PE ratio. Forward PE of 13.2. EPS next five years, 19.65%. That's really good. Bringing its price earnings to growth ratio to 0.82. So under one, that's fantastic. Margins here are phenomenal, right? Over 50% for its gross margin. Operating margins of 38.9% and profit margin 36.6%. So over a third of everything they bring in is going to be straight profit. That's fantastic. Giving it a market cap of just under $51 billion. Pays a small dividend and has a current ratio of 2.40. Marvel Technology Group Limited. Right now, it's not profitable. On Finviz, it shows that it is barely negative. It's about to be profitable as their forward PE is 19.59, which is solid back to profitability. Earnings per share the next five years, 42.14%. This is the highest of all semiconductors, I believe. As you can see, that's huge growth for every year the next five years. PG ratio can't be calculated because you need a PE ratio. Gross margin, 46.3%. Then you can see it has a negative operating margin, obviously because it's a negative profit company. So it's not going to have a PE ratio. And then here is its profit margin, bringing its market cap to 51.79 billion. Pays a small dividend, which blows my mind considering they're not profitable yet, but they're about to be. And this company has been profitable in the past, just isn't right now. And it has more assets than liabilities with current ratio of 1.80. Synopsis SNPS Incorporated PE ratio. It's a little overvalued, right? At 49.68, kind of like NVIDIA, it's got that high PE ratio, but it's got good future growth, right? Forward PE of 31.4, EPS next five years, 16.2%, bring its PEG ratio to 3.07, right? This high number, about 50 divided by 16, gives us that 3.07 number, has high gross margins, but as you can see, the operating margin and profit margin drop significantly from its gross margin, so they're spending a lot of money on R&D and stuff like that, they have higher operational costs, bring its profit margin down to 20%, which is still in that good section, right? That's pretty fine with me, 20, 25%. Market cap just under 50 billion, doesn't pay a dividend, and has a current ratio of 1.20. Cadence Design Systems Incorporated, CDNS. PE ratio 61.46, again, overvalued right now, with a forward PE ratio 35.92. EPS the next five years at 15.4% with a PEG just under four. So don't really like all these numbers, but that's okay. Not every stock in the ETF is going to be phenomenal. Gross margins are huge, just under 90%. Operating margin, 26.10%. Profit margin, 23.2%. They're kind of like synopsis, right? They're, they're getting huge gross margins, right? They're not spending a lot on those costs of goods sold for the revenues they're getting. They're just, I'm sure, putting a lot of money into R&D. They're hiring more people. There's more fees. There's more expenses. So more general and emission costs. Brings your operational costs up, right? And then profit margin is 23.2%. It's still over 20. That's going to increase, I'm sure, over the years. Good market cap. Saw it at $45.32 billion, Current ratio of 1.80. And it doesn't pay a dividend. Microchip technology. This is another one of my favorites. Just under 3% holding in the ETF. PE ratio of 33.73 with a forward PE of 12.46. EPS next five years, 20.50%. Bring its price earnings to growth to 1.65. Solid numbers here. A little overvalued now, but that's okay. Again, people are buying it now, looking for those future earnings like me, right? I'm buying LAM Research. I'm buying Micron Technologies. Maybe I'll buy some of this. Maybe I'll buy some AMD. Right, we can't own them all, but with this SMH Van Ectors ETF for the semiconductors, you can just buy a few shares of that and you'll have a little bit in all of these companies, right? You'll have a little bit of showing for all of them. Gross margin, operating margin, and profit margins are all here. Profit margin a little low, under 20%, but it's still solid at 15.00% with a market cap of 37.47 billion. Pays a dividend of 
0.57%, has a current ratio of 1.8, more assets and liabilities. ST Microelectrics, STM is the ticker. This is another solid play. It has a PE ratio of 18.58, 4P of 10.73, EPS next five years, 5%. That's quite low, not a lot of growth, right? At least projected, maybe that'll change, right? These aren't for certain numbers, right? These are just analyst projections. This could go to negative 50. This can go to positive 80, right? Could go to over 100. Who knows for sure? But for the math for this, 18.58 divided by 5, because it's 3.72, quite high. Operating margins are under 50%, not so good. In profit margin, under 20, 25%, not so good, but not horrible, right? 14.3%. Bring its market cap to 34.65 billion, pays a small dividend, under 1%, and has a current ratio of 2.70. On semiconductors, ticker ON has a PE ratio of 22.51. This is another one of my favorites. I like this company, although I don't own, I don't own any shares. Forward PE of 11.54, EPS in the next five years of 18.84, bringing its price earnings to growth ratio to 1.19. Gross margins are under that 50%. Profit margins are under that 20% at 15%, but hopefully these numbers will get larger and larger. And these aren't even horrible, right? Pretty solid overall average, bringing its market cap to 23.80 billion, doesn't pay dividend, has a current ratio of 2.5. Skyworks Solutions Incorporated, SWKS, the ticker, has just under 2% holding in the ETF. PE ratio of 13.46, forward PE ratio of 8.78, so good potential here for the next four quarters for earnings for at least the growth eps next five years 11.90 bring its price earnings growth to 1.13 which is solid gross margins just under 50 percent profit margins just over 25 percent operating margins 29.10 percent solid right just solid all around there with the margins market cap 19 billion and 50 million the dividend yield exactly 2% for the price it is now and has a current ratio of 4.20, a ton of assets, right? Monolithic Power Systems Incorporated, MPWR, is the next holding the ETF with 1.67% equity. PE ratio is very high at 77.68, 4P of 34.40, EPS the next five years, 25%. Great numbers, except PE is a little overvalued, quite overvalued. So it brings its PEG ratio to 3.11, which is quite high, even though they have great EPS for the next five years. It's just sober value now bringing its PEG ratio down. Gross margin of 56.8%, operating margin 21.7%, profit margin 20%, all very good margins. Market cap 1.51 billion, smaller company, pays a small dividend of 0.6. 1% has a current ratio of 5.0. Teradyne Incorporated TER ticker has a 1.65% holding in the ETF PE ratio of 19.25, forward PE of 15.81, EPS next five years 14.16%, price earnings to growth ratio 1.36, all solid numbers so far, and their margins are great with profit margins being over 25%, mark gross margins over 50%, fantastic. And market cap of 17.76 billion with a small dividend of just under half a percent annual yield in a current ratio of 3.2. Corvo Incorporated with a 1.11% holding as a next stock in the ETF. Ticker QRVO has a PE ratio of 11.15, future PE ratio of 8.52. EPS next five years, 12.34, divided into that 11.15 gives us a PEG ratio of under one, a 0 0.90, gross margin of 49.3%, around that 50% is awesome, operating margin 27.0%, so over that 20 to 25, and giving her profit margin over that 20, just under 25 at 24.60%, great margins, market cap of 12.39 billion, doesn't pay a dividend, has a current ratio of 3.60. As you can see, guys, as I'm going through these companies, the market cap gets lower and lower. The big companies like Taiwan Semiconductor, NVIDIA, LAM Research, Intel, all those big companies, those high market cap companies are toward the front of this ETF, having a larger equity in this ETF, having a larger holding in the ETF. OLED is our last ticker, our last company here in the SMH ETF. 
It is Universal Display Corporation, has a 0.56% holding in the ETF, so very small coverage. That's okay. PE ratio 32.62, forward PE of 22.86, EPS next five years at 23.18, giving our price earnings to growth ratio at 1.41, which is solid, good numbers so far. Margins are all fantastic from gross to operating to profit. All fantastic. Here's the numbers. Market cap of 6.66 billion. Yikes. Just kidding. Dividend yield of 0.63%. So it does pay dividend even with such small market cap. It has a current ratio of 4.90. A lot more assets and liabilities. So guys, let's take a look at the averages of all these numbers and compare them to Apple, Tesla, and Berkshire Hathaway. Why Apple? Because it's one of the biggest companies in the world. Everyone owns it. Why Tesla? Similar story, right? A lot of people own it. And Berkshire Hathaway, one of the number one value plays out there. So guys, here's the averages for the SMH ETF, Apple, Tesla, and Berkshire Hathaway Class A shares. So guys, let's go over the PE ratios here with SMH is 28.68. All I did was add the... PE ratios of all 25 companies, actually 24. I didn't take Marvel, right? Because you didn't have a PE ratio. Right now, it's not profitable. So I added all the PE ratios of the other 24 companies, divided it by 24, and got this number. Okay, I didn't add in the percent equity rate from the ETF. Like NVIDIA has 8%. Taiwan Semiconductors has 10%. I didn't add those percent holdings in. I just added up the 24 PEs, divided it by 24, and got this number. Okay, same with all of these. Okay, I just did that with all of these numbers here. So Apple's is 26, Tesla's 119, Berkshire's is 8.3. So as you can see, Berkshire has the lowest price earnings ratio. Remember, you want a low price earnings ratio. So they win this category. Second's Apple with 26. Third is the SMH semiconductor ETF. And fourth is Tesla for forward PE. So basically the PE ratio now, except projected for next year, right? For the price of the stock now divided by the next four earnings, their TTM, EPS, trailing 12 months EPS. So for the next projected four quarters, remember this can't, isn't certain. This could be 10 or this could be 40, right? Next year, this is just projections, 16.6. That's the winner with SMA GTF. So the semiconductors, have the best projected earnings, bringing the PEs down. Second place is going to be Berkshire Hathaway. Third place is Apple. And fourth place is Tesla. For the EPS the next five years, you can see Tesla has the best growth, right? About 40%. That's huge. Followed by the semiconductor ETF SMH, 19% or so. That's fantastic there as well. Third place is Apple, 10.2%, and Berkshire has a negative. That's not good, so they're in last place. Price to earnings to growth ratio for the average SMH semiconductor ETF wins with a 1.78. That's without Marv, right? Couldn't get a PEG ratio. So that's under two. That's fantastic. Second's going to be Apple. Over, two per, over that 2.00, that's okay. And then Tesla at 3.0, quite high even though the EPS for the next five years is high. Their price to earnings ratios is so high now. PEG at three, which for Tesla is not bad. Tesla is kind of in its own world with high valuation, but high future growth. So PEG at 3.0 isn't all too bad with Tesla, but SMH wins with the lowest PEG ratio. For gross margin, again, gross margin, guys, is the revenue minus the cost of the goods sold. So basically the revenue minus what it took to get that revenue. Uh, goods wise. So 57%, 57.2% to be exact. That's the first place. Second place is Apple at 43%. Third place, Tesla at 27.1%. And Berkshire Hathaway at 22%. Operating margin. So for operating margin, Apple is going to win with the highest margin, 30.90%. So they have great operating income. Second is going to be SMH semiconductor ETF at 27.56%, third Berkshire just over 11%, and fourth is Tesla just over 7%. Four, highest profit margin. I think this is an error on FinViz with Berkshire. I don't know how their operating margin is lower than their profit margin, but profit margin is going to be going to first to the Berkshire Hathaway Class A, 
second to Apple at 26.6% profit margin. Third is going to 24.02% with SMH ETF. And last, fourth place is Tesla with 5.6% profit margin. For dividends, the ETF SMH wins. The semiconductors do pay decent dividends, 1.08% dividend annual yield there. So that's going to be our first place winner. Second place is Apple, 0.56% dividend yield. And Tesla and Berkshire Class A don't pay a dividend. Current ratio, which is basically their assets divided by their liabilities, to put it simply, the SMH semiconductor ETF is winning with a 2.86 ratio. Again, you want this to be as high as you can go. Second place is Tesla, 1.4. Third, Apple 1.00, so pretty similar. And Berkshire couldn't get one on there. So that just kind of sums up the averages here between SMH, Apple, Tesla, and Berkshire. As you can see, SMH Semiconductor ETF has a lot of green and a few orange, which is third place. So a lot of green first and seconds. It has no dead last, which is red. Tesla has a bunch of red, a bunch of dead last. Berkshire has a bunch of red, which is dead last. Apple has no dead last. They're a bunch of first, seconds, and some thirds. So is SMH. So I would be buying these two of the four. But that's it for the video, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, give it a like down below. It helps out the channel. And subscribe while you're down there as well. And you can see more videos similar to this. Hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Peace.